leadership. Um, last week, we started our new series called Leaping Into Leadership, and Pastor Patrick kicked it off. Let's thank God for him. I know he did a great job, you know, um, kicking it off. And I, and I believe that he came from 1 Samuel 17, and he talked about um, David and Goliath. Am I correct? Well, without me realizing that's what he did, the Lord led me to 1 Samuel 17 for this message today. So I want you to go to 1 Samuel 17, verses, um, start, let's start with verse 4 to 11 so we can get a backdrop. And then I'm going to give you the key verse, which is verse 16. And a champion, this is talking about Goliath, okay? How many know the David and Goliath story? I mean, it's been preached all over the world. <laughs> so, and a champion went out from the champ, the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his legs bronze ja and bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels, and a shield bearer went before him. So he had armor on, he had the sh and he, it was so much weight. And he's like nine something, nine feet something, that he has a guy before him holding his shield. All right? Verse 8, then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and you the servants of Saul? Remember, he's very proud of who he was. He was what? proud of who he was. And one of the keys to being a great leader, to being a champion in this life, is being proud of who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. Well, that's a huge deal. But he, the reason why he presented that kind of challenge and that kind of deal is because he expected that he would win. All right. And the Philistine said, so that's one of the other things that comes from leadership. You are expecting yourself to win. If you go out into this world and you're expecting to lose, you're going to lose. But if you're expecting to win, you're going to win. And that's what a leader does. They expect to win. Come on, somebody. Um, verse 10, and the Philistine said, I defy the armies of, the, of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. And that's one of the things a leader does also. They defy the enemy. And you as a believer, as an ambassador for Christ, it is your responsibility to, to, to defy the enemy. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Come on, get excited, somebody. Amen. Somebody say, I'm excited. We got to do an, an excitement drill. Somebody say, I'm excited, I'm excited. and I'm delighted. I'm delighted. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Verse 11, when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. And that's what happens when the devil speaks to people and they listen to his words without the word of God being inside of them. The Bible says, that they were dismayed and greatly afraid. They were at a place where, ah, let's just give up. We are so terrified of this guy. Now, let's flip it. When you have the mindset of a champion, when you have the mindset of a leader as an ambassador for Christ, a representative for the, to the kingdom of God, you speak words and the devils, the demons, they are dismayed and they are greatly afraid. Amen? Hallelujah. We are on the offensive as the kingdom of God, not on the defensive. But this is the key verse that I want to bring out that the Holy Spirit is bringing to us today. Verse 16. And the Philistine, talking about Goliath, drew near and presented himself. Everybody say, presented himself. Forty days, morning and evening. What did he do? 
What did he do? What did he do? What did he do? Presented himself. <laughs> 40 days, morning and evening. And that's what champions do. That's what leaders do. They present themselves. And so our message today to you by the Holy Spirit is present yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, present yourself. Now we're going to get a lot of things. You, you can get a lot of things from David, but the Lord showed me some time ago, you can get a lot of things about leadership from Goliath. If you look at Goliath, he's a champion for a reason. Because he put in some leadership principles, some championship principles that made him the leader. It wasn't just because he was nine feet tall. You can be nine feet tall and be a loser. He was nine feet tall, but he was a winner. He was skillful. He was bold. He was confident. And the Bible says he presented himself. And to tell you the truth, I preach this story hundreds of times. Not literally hundreds of times, but a lot over my course of ministry. And I never saw that. I saw the 40 days and the 40 nights before, but I never, the Holy Spirit, zoop, zeroed in on, presented himself. And the, and the Lord showed me the believer who wants to be a leader must present himself. And himself means herself too. And so the first thing you're going to do, write this down, present yourself to God. Before you do anything else in this life, you have the responsibility to present yourself to God. And the only reason you get to present yourself to God is because Jesus has already presented you to God. Oh, come on, somebody. You get to present yourself to God in practicality because Jesus has already presented you to God. Revelations chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. Let's go there, actually. Um, I didn't even put it in there, but let me just go there. Revelations 1, 5, and 6. I could quote it, but let me read it. All right. And it says, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us. I love that. Jesus loved you. I call this the triple blessing. And washed us from our sins in his own blood. So he first loved us. That's number one. Number two, he washed us from our sins in his own blood. Somebody say, I'm washed. I'm washed. Number three, and made us kings and priests. That's blessing number three and has made us kings and priests. He's not going to do it. He has already done it. But this is the part that's very powerful. To his God and Father. So you are a king and a priest to God. To God. And Father, to whom be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So you have been presented before the Father as kings and priests to the Father. He was saying, Father, here are your people. Here are the cleansed ones. Here are the ones that I've died for. Amen? I'm going to prove it to you. Matter of fact, oh, I didn't even think about this. Come on, Lord. Holy Ghost. <laughs> Go to Hebrews. Chapter 2. Verse 10. For it was fitting for him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons to glory. You were brought to glory. You were presented to the Father to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings for both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. So when Jesus presented himself 
before the Father. You were in Christ, and therefore you were presented before the Father. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so because you were presented by Jesus to the Father, you are now responsible to present yourself to the Father. The Bible says in um, Romans 12, 1, um, I beseech you by the mercy of God that you present your bodies. You what? Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, which means that your body, right, is part of who you are, and your body is to be presented before God. Holy and acceptable. You are to live a holy life. You are to keep your life clean. You present yourself to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 4 that when Moses was called on the scene, the Bible says that Moses had to present. Chapter 3 verse 4 said God told Moses to present himself to him on the mountain. Let's look at that. Exodus what? 3, 4? Can we get rid of that stereo sound, please? It's annoying me. No, that's the wrong scripture. What did I say? 3, 4? 34, 2, I'm sorry. Exodus 34, 2. So be ready in the morning and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself. What? Present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. And so your responsibility when you're a leader, when you're as a child of God, all of us are leaders. All of us are priests to God. Isn't it interesting that the Levitical priesthood were the spiritual leaders of Israel? And the Bible says now you are all priests. So you are all leaders. You all have responsibility to pray and intercede and supplicate for others and yourself, your family members, your co-workers, the people around you, your nation, your government. You're all leaders. Somebody say, I'm a leader. I'm a leader. You're a leader in the natural. You're a leader in the spiritual realm. Amen. And so you have a responsibility to present yourself to God because you cannot be effective if you have not come to God first. Because everything you have to offer the world first comes from him. Moses wasn't just a great miracle worker and a great deliverer in and of himself. No. He felt that he couldn't even talk. He felt inadequate. But it was the presence of God in his life that made him a great deliverer, a great man of God, a miracle worker. And it's the presence of God in your life that will make you distinct. Can I get an Amen. So you must present yourself to God. How do you present yourself to God? In prayer, in praise, in worship. You need to wake up saying, good morning, Father. Good morning, Lord Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I present myself before you, O God. And the Bible tells you what to do when you, when you present yourself. It says, come before his presence with singing. Start singing to the Lord. I don't really like singing. Well, make yourself like singing. <laughs> Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. If you have the spirit of God living inside of you, there is a song in your heart. There is a, absolutely a song in your heart. It's in your spirit. Some of you, when you wake up, you hear the song. If you're in the spirit, you will hear songs coming out of your spirit, man. Because the Lord wants to be sung to. He wants to be worshipped. He wants to be communicated to. He wants you to present yourself to him. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. If Goliath could present himself before the, the army of Israel and say, I defy you for 40 days and 40 nights, surely you could present yourself before your father. Hallelujah. That's where revelation is. That's where help is. The Bible says, those who what? Wait on the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. One of the reasons why you present yourself to God is so you can be strong. So every Christian that you find as weak, you know they're not presenting themselves before God. Amen, that's right. 
You don't even have to wonder. You don't have to even ask them. If somebody's coming to you and they're talking about how weak they are, they are not presenting themselves before God. Because it's impossible to be a weak Christian and present yourself before the Father. The Bible says, those that wait on the Lord, spend time with God, spend time in his presence, they will renew their strength. They will what? Mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not faint. They will walk and not grow weary. So if you see fainting, if you see weariness, that means the person has not been in the presence of God. So the key to deliverance from depression, from sadness, from slothfulness is to be with the Father. His presence will speed you up. His presence will give you energy. His presence will make you alive. Can I get an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Is anybody excited in here? Somebody say, I'm excited. excited. And I'm delighted. delighted. Hallelujah. (laughs) Isn't it interesting that when God created Adam and Eve, the Bible says, before the fall, he would come in the cool of the day and fellowship with them, hang out with them. And then we know they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and they sinned. The Bible says the Lord came (laughs) and they were nowhere to be found because they were what? Hiding. And there's only two things you're doing in this life. You're either presenting yourself or you're hiding. There's no in between. You're presenting yourself or you're hiding. And the Bible says that they were hiding from the Lord. Not that you can really hide. But they were hiding. They thought they were hiding from the Lord. And God began to ask them a series of questions. The first thing he says, where are you? Now, when God asks you a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. It's to get you to begin to look at yourself. You're no longer presenting yourself to me. What's the problem? And then they came out of hiding and said, oh, uh, we, we were scared. We were naked. We were blah, 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 blah. He said, who told you that you were naked? Where are you? Who told you? And then he said, um, what's going on? Oh, the woman you gave me. <laughs> and then he said to um, Eve, what, have, what is this that you have done? Because they no longer were presenting themselves to the Father. They were hiding. They were hiding. And God doesn't want you to hide. When God begins to ask you questions, it's so you can come out of hiding. Come out, come out, wherever you are. <laughs> come out of hiding. Because when you're hiding, you're not fulfilling his plan and purpose for your life. When you're hiding, you're not walking in destiny. When you're hiding, you are food for the devil. Because the devil lurks in hidden places. He lurks in darkness. He lurks where people are hiding. Now, if you're hiding in a secret place, it's different. But when you're hiding from the Father, you're not presenting yourself to God, you're not going to win. You're going to lose every time. But thank God for his mercy and grace. Amen? Amen. To remind us to present ourselves to him. Hallelujah. You know, it's very interesting that um, Jesus, when he was a baby, as he was born, the Bible says that they went to the temple to present him to God. Even Jesus, the son of God, had to be presented to the father. There's a power in presenting yourself. And because there's power in presenting yourself, the devil, Goliath, representing the devil, though he was an enemy, Though he was representing the devil, he was a champion. Come on. He was a winner. He was a leader. And he took that secret of presenting yourself and used it. You can learn a lot about leadership in the spirit by looking at the kingdom of darkness. Because all they do is copycat. They use the principles that God gives and they copy. And so it's important that you notice that witches and warlocks, they do a lot of praying and fasting. They're not praying to God. (laughs) This is why Jesus said, 
this kind does not come up, but, but, but through prayer and fasting. There's a consecration even witches and warlocks put themselves into. And Christians think, oh, I don't have to consecrate and have power. No, it don't work that way. Be wiser. <laughs> and look and say, oh, why does the devil do that? Because he knows the power in it. You notice that a lot of witches and warlocks, they're in forests. And they're in what they call, what they call the, the, the jungles. What they call the, these um, um, sorcerers, they call them the bushman. Do you ever wonder why they're in the bush? Do you ever wonder why they're in secluded places? Does anybody ever wonder that? <laughs> because the place of solitary. And when you're in a place of solitary, you have greater power. What did the Bible say Jesus did? Did he just hang out with the disciples all the time? Feeding the 3,000 and the 4,000 and the 5,000 all day long? In the temple all day long? The Bible says that he will wake up a great while before day and go to a solitary place and there pray. So the reason why he was a mighty leader, why he was a mighty God, why he was a great miracle worker, because he always kept that presenting himself before God in his life. Even after he would do great signs and wonders. Remember that time he did some great signs and wonders? The Bible says he sent the disciples away so he can go pray. He went to the mountain to go pray. He went to a place of solitude because there is a place of great power. Watch this. You're going to learn something. So Goliath, the Bible says, presented himself for 40 days and for 40 nights. Am I correct? What did, what did Jesus do in the wilderness? <laughs> Pray for what? 40 days. And what? 40 nights. Hello? And the Bible says that when he left that place, what does it say? Does anybody know? He returned to Galilee. In what? in the power of the Spirit. Presenting yourself to God will cause you to be a powerful Christian. You don't need to wonder what the answer is. You don't need to guess in 2024 how to become powerful, how to become a threat to the devil, how do I stay on the winning side, how do I stay on top? Here's your answer. Present yourself to God. Consistently. One day the Lord told me, he said, sporadic time in my word is not going to work. I hear you. <laughs> you don't need to repeat yourself. I got it. Sporadic time in my word is not going to work. He could see me. You're spending time in my word, but it's sporadic because your mind is on other things. And the things that you want and the things that want to come through you, it's not going to work if you're doing it sporadically. Did Goliath present himself to Israel sporadically? No. The Bible says he did it for 40 days and what? For 40 nights. He was not sporadic. Somebody say, I'm not going to be sporadic. To the 24, it's our year of celebration, acceleration. If you want to accelerate, you have to present yourself to God. You have to make a fresh commitment to be in the presence of God. There's a reason why demons try to distract you from praying and worshiping and being in the Bible. There's a reason why. Do you ever ask yourself, why? Why do I am always distracted from the word? Why do I get these feelings? Oh, this is boring. Because Satan knows that's where the power is. So he'll send all kinds of distractions. All of a sudden, you start praying. You say, okay, I'm going to pray. I'm gonna get the phone starts ringing. The text starts going. I've been saved for 30-something years, and I, it still happens. 
I've been in prison. I've been doing nothing. Nobody's bothering me. Nobody's calling me. Nobody's texting me. Soon as I set myself to pray, oh, heck of the phone calls and the text. That's the devil to distract you. And you have to overcome those distractions. You have to put the phone down. You have to put Instagram down. You have to put Facebook down. And you have to spend time with God. There's people that I know that have prolonged issues in their life. And it's very simple. You're not in the presence of God. You're watching TV, but you're not in the Word. You're watching TV, but you're not listening to healing scriptures. You have tons of programs you watch, but there's not one healing tape you listen to for 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible says, attend to my word. What? Attend to my word. You know what attend means? Give attention to it. Pay attention to it. Look at it. Focus on it. Hello, somebody. You become a master in the spirit if you attend to the word of God. Sickness and disease can no longer handle you if the word is in you. You see people who are sick and dealing with prolonged sicknesses, there's a sign they've not been in the word. Because the Bible says he sent his word and what? Healed them. Amen. And delivered them from their destructions. Amen. You can't wait till the attack comes. You need to fill yourself with the word now. Amen. And they produce 30, 60, and 100 fold. Don't just get excited about the word, excited about preaching. Oh, I saw the scripture. Oh, this revelation. No, meditate on the word day and night. That's what Psalm says, right? If you meditate on the word day and night, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water who brings forth its fruit in the season, whose leaf does not wither, no weakness, no anxiety, no problems, and whatever you do shall prosper. So if you're not prospering, I know you've not been in the word day and night. Meditating, thinking about it, focusing on it, holding it. It's important to read the Bible, but it's more important to meditate. It's important to what? The Bible, but it's more important to what? To meditate means to ponder, to think upon, to consider. And I didn't say study. Another thing to study, meditating is not studying. Because you study, you're kind of all over the place, looking at this, looking at that, looking at this. When you're meditating, you're focused on one thing. Goliath was a champion and became a champion in the army of the Philistines because he was focused on one thing, fighting. He must have a champion among the Philistines. That means I'm not trying to see who the hottest Philistine chick is. I'm not on philistinedating.com. Um, I'm not um, watching um, um, TV all day, Philistine television. I'm not reading the Philistine news. No, I'm in the field fighting. I'm in the back practicing. Goliath wasn't a champion without skill. In order to have skill, you got to meditate. You got to focus on that one thing. Am I right? When Jesus got anointed by the Spirit and was baptized, water baptized by John the Baptist, was he a carpenter after that? Yes or no? No. You see no signs of him going back to carpentry. He was in a new season, and he focused on that season, which was what? Preaching, teaching, and healing the sick. Preaching the kingdom of God, teaching in the synagogue, and healing the sick. That's what, that's what Jesus focused on. He said, for the Lord is upon me to preach the good news to the poor. To heal the brokenhearted. To bring recovery of sight to the blind. And on and on and on. He was focused. He knew how to be a leader. He knew how to be a champion. So he leaped into his leadership and didn't turn back. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah.
Number two. So by presenting yourself. After you present yourself to God, you ready for this one? Yeah. You ready in that? <laughs> she said, yeah. Mm -hmm. Present yourself to yourself. Ooh, you don't even know what this means. You have to find out. After you present yourself to God, the next step is to present yourself to yourself. And in the scriptures, you'll find this pattern. Because reality, you want to know a secret, Pastor Sam? This whole life is about you and God. Oh, my Lord. Woo. Come on. It's about what? You and God. That's all it's about. It ain't about the animals. It ain't about the angels. Thank God for the angels. Thank God for the cherubim. Thank God for everybody. This life is about you and God. David said, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? When I consider the moon and the stars, what is this? I was in a plane yesterday and that scripture came to me. I'm so high up and I'm looking down at the little cars like little beady roaches. And I said, what is this? God, we're like little, little creatures. Like, are we, are we like your play toys or something? Doesn't make any sense. The great God Almighty. Incomprehensible. Incomprehensible. What is this? So I understood what David meant. When you look at the vastness of the creation, it makes you feel so small. But God says, no, nah, all that's for you. Oh, what a lover, what a God, what a father, what a creator. Amen. Amen. So when God created Adam and Eve, the Bible says he created a whole planet. OK, everything's all nice. And then he created man. He got he said, OK, I'm going to just speak this into existence. I'm going to speak to myself. But I'm actually going to physically get involved and make this clay. He shaped man. And then whoo, breathe it in the breath of life. Then he was like, you know what? Ah, this creation is not, a, is not good enough for him. Not comparable to him. Puts him to sleep. He didn't say angels go do it. He could have. He didn't say angels go do it. Did he? Did he? No, the Bible says he did the operation. Cut him open, took the rib out. And at that rib, he formed the woman. And then what did he do? He presented her to him. This whole life is about you and God. You presenting to him and him presenting to you. We love him because he first loved us. This is the first and the great, out of the mouth of Jesus, commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Then love your neighbor as yourself. It's about you and God. Jesus said, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The whole Old Testament is about loving God and loving people. That's it. This whole life is about you and God. Come on, somebody. So now that you present yourself to God, you need to present yourself to yourself. <laughs> so here we go. Moses is in a mountain, and Moses sees a bush burning. Remember that story? It's 40 years after he told him. How, how long? How long? 40. <laughs> Interesting. 40 years after I initially told you what to do, I got all, all this flesh out of you, 
all this impulsiveness, all this selfish ambition. Now you're ready at 80. The Bible says that he was curious. Why is the bush burning? Does anybody remember that? Now, you have to be, you have to pay attention to what the Bible says. It was because of that, then God spoke. The Bible says, because he turned aside to see why the bush was burning, the Bible says God spoke. That tells me a lot. That when you're not interested, he's not going to speak. When you're not interested, when you're not curious, I can't really use you as a leader. I want to, but I can't. Because you're too, what? Self-indulged. People who are not curious are what? Self-indulged. Now, let me tell you something. I was telling Nikita and Avi that when I was away at Rhema this past week, um, actually, no. I see my dad first, Wichita, Kansas. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I saw Dorothy. No, let me stop. <laughs> I had some prophetic dreams. And in my dreams, um, I, can, I can track how they're going. So there's one season in my dreams where I started dreaming in threes. Three dreams. In one, in, 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 I was like, that's interesting. It's, it's a lot of stuff with that. But I notice now I'm dreaming and I'm seeing the hearts of people. I'm seeing their motives. It's a very powerful thing. You just know it. You know what they're thinking. You know what, you know what the God is showing you. And so anyway, um, I had these dreams. But one of the things that stood out is that the Lord showed me um, a particular person and said, you see that? They're disinterested. This is why they're not being used. I was like, you see that person? That is why they're not married. It's two different dreams, two different people. And I was like, oh, shoot, look at the heart. The heart, that's the issue. Even when I was there, I ministered to the mother of one of my father's girlfriends, <laughs> 81 year old woman. And I was sitting there, I just met her. She's someone from the deep south. <laughs> and I perceived by the spirit certain things about her. And the next day, the Lord woke me up after he had these, these prophetic dreams and says, now, I want you to, go, before you meet your dad, go meet with her. I set it up, I met with her, and it was amazing. She was crying and thanked me for ministering to her by the Spirit. Oh, <sighs> Lord have mercy. When you are a leader, you have to present yourself to yourself. So Moses has an encounter with God. That's him presenting himself to God. But now God gives him an assignment. And he says, it's time for you to go tell the Pharaoh to let my people go. Oh, who going to say that sent me? He already started. He started saying, oh, this is amazing. This is awesome. Who are? The self-doubt starts coming out. He says, say, I am that I am. That's what you're going to say. Matter of fact, gather the elders and let them know that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that name ain't going to never change. I'm the one sending you guys. So he was like, all right. Now watch this. Exodus 4, go with me there. Verses 1 to 9. Then Moses answered and said, but suppose... They will not believe me and listen to my voice. Suppose they say the Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? He said, a rod. Because when you present yourself to yourself, the question you're answering is, what can you do? What can I do? What talent do I have? What ability do I have? What gift do I have? And he said, cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses fled from it. Oh, there's so many implications to that. One of the biggest implications is that many people are running from their own gift. 
They're running from their own calling. They're running from their own destiny. They're running from the very thing that God has put into their hands. Or because it scares them. Or if they're not running, they're like those who don't do something with what God has given them. They're lazy. Isn't it interesting, in Matthew 25, the story of the talents that Jesus calls the guy who buried his talent wicked and what? Lazy. Isn't it interesting that the guy himself called himself, I, knowing you being a tough guy, I was afraid. Laziness and fear are the two keys that will keep you from being a great leader. Two keys that will keep you from being used by God. Two keys that will keep you in a stalemate position. You have to rip off the robe of laziness. You have to rip off the robe of fear and say, I will not be lazy and I will not be afraid. Matter of fact, say it with me right now. I will not be lazy. And I will not be afraid in the name of Jesus. What is that in your hand? Verse two. He said, a rod. He said, cast it down on the ground. So he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand. What did he say? Reach out your hand. That means put forth some efforts. I gave you a gift. I gave you a talent. Do something with it. Reach out your hand. Hallelujah. And take it by the tail. <laughs> There's implications to that too. Take it by the what? Take it by the tail. Handle your gift properly. You don't take a snake by the head. You take it by the tail. Handle your gift properly. Use it properly. You have the gift of giving? Use it. You have the gift of mercy? Use it. You move in the spirit? Use it. You have gifts of healings? Use them. David said, I'm going to praise God because when I go to the grave, there ain't no praise in the grave. <laughs> so let me praise God right now. He said, I ain't going to wait till I get to Abraham's bosom. I'm going to praise him now. I'm going to worship him now. Think about it. How long you've been saved? Do you have a record of being an appraiser? Do you have, do you have a record of being a, a worshiper? Do you have a record of being a person who prays and gets prayers answered? Will Jesus say you have got many prayers answered? Will Jesus say you set a lot of people free? Will Jesus say you've won many souls? Because there is a record that will be opened at the end. What are you doing with the potential that the Father has put inside of you? What are you doing with the gift that God himself has given you? I challenge you in 2024, use your gift. Use the glory the Father has put inside of you. Jesus said, Father, in John 17, the glory you have given me, I have given them. Hallelujah. And you see the apostles walked in that glory. The Bible records Peter a lot, but the apostles walked in the glory, all of them. <laughs> the words you have given me, I have given them. Jesus was like, listen, Father, I've been responsible to do what you told me to do. I gave them the glory, I gave them the name you gave me, and I gave them the words you gave me. So every believer has the glory, the name of Jesus, and the word of God. There is no reason for losing. Somebody say, no reason. no reason. Somebody say, no reason. No reason. And his blood is on the mercy seat. Amen. And you have resurrection power inside of you. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost of the Spirit is upon you. And you have the power to speak in tongues and build yourself up in your most holy faith. Somebody say, Jesus. Jesus. Gave it all to me. Hallelujah. Okay, so, and he reached out his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. 
that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. So your gift is proof that God is with you. Furthermore, the Lord said to him, now put your hand in your bosom. He's doing a training exercise. He's presenting, he's helping Moses present himself to himself. See what I'm saying? Furthermore, the Lord said, now put your hand in your bosom. So you know what they, they would dress? It wasn't like this. They, would have, they could do like this. The bosom is right here. You put your hand in there. He said, put your hand in your bosom. So imagine a bathrobe. You have a bathrobe and it's kind of open so you can put your hand in. Put your hand in there. Put, he put his hand in his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. Pure white. <laughs> and we put it and he took it out. Behold, his hand was, 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 was leprous like snow. And he said, put your hand in your bosom again. He put it in again. So he put in his hand in the bosom again and drew it out of his bosom. Behold, it was restored like the other flesh. Miracles. Then it will be, if they do not believe you, nor heed the message of the first sign, that you may believe the message of the latter sign. They don't believe you, throw the snake down, do the bosom thing. The, <laughs> the hand thing. And it should be that they don't believe even those two signs or listen to your voice that you shall take water from the river and pour it out on the dry land. The water which you take from the river will become blood on the dry land. Wow. In other words, God gave him an arsenal of stuff. But the point was, it was time for Moses. Look, okay, now you heard what I called you to do. You heard my assignment. You heard who I am. Now you need to know who you are and what you got. You're like, Lord, how do I, I already told you what to do. You need to become more intimate with the gifts and abilities I've given you. <laughs> uh, revelation knowledge. Uh, time for me to end. Watch this. The word of God is a mirror. Is that what James says? The word is a what? So everything God said to Moses was a what? Look at yourself. Does that James say that? He says when you look at the word, it's like looking into a mirror. You know what the problem is? We have a forgot. We have a lot of people who forget who they are. Uh, uh, what's that guy's name? <laughs> what's his name, man? Um, what's that guy's name? The one who does Family Feud. Steve Harvey, yeah, yeah. I was reading an article about him, about all his wealth and stuff. This was some years ago. I think it's Ebony or Essence. I think it was Ebony. And um, he's talking about, you know, how he's doing, how he's making it happen, blah, 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 blah. And about people of color and how we're sometimes not doing things because we're lazy. And there's a statement he made. I cannot forget it. He said, too much chilling going on. <laughs> I want to find that article. I tried to find it. I would try to still find it. He said, there's too much chilling going on. And I said to myself, there's too much forgetting going on. People keep forgetting who they are. They come to church, hear that new creation of Christ. They're sons of God. They're, they're amazing. They're this, they're that, they're this, they're that. You hear year after year after year after year. You're called, you're anointed, you hear the prophet. You know, when you get prophecies from Todd Bentley, me, Pastor Samantha, or Pastor Patrick, Pastor Fabian, Pastor Josh, or whoever, that's a mirror. And, and trust me, <laughs> you may think God's not recording. He's recording. He told Israel, you've tested me these 10 times. He's recording how many times he's spoken to you. He's recording how many times he showed you yourself in the mirror. He's recording how many times he's given you a prophetic word. Whether it's the written word, the prophetic word, or um, a vision, it is his word showing you yourself as a mirror so you can present yourself to yourself and have confidence. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, I will not be a forgetful hearer. James 1, 22, 25 says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. What? 
deceive us. Oh, yeah, God, give me a gift. Yeah, I can do this. Yeah, I can throw my rod down. Yeah, I can take the water from the... Uh, oh, yeah, I can do that. But you ain't do nothing. Because the Bible says afterward, he went to Pharaoh. Afterward, is there an afterward in your story? Is there an afterward in your story? You seen all the YouTube videos, you heard Susie Orman, you heard this one, you heard that one about financial acumen, how to give. Where's the manifestation? You heard how to lose weight, you heard how to eat right, you heard how to stay healthy, you heard how to stay alive for a long time. What you doing with it? Come on, somebody. See somebody like Rachel. How long were you single? I mean, obviously you're single until you got married. But how long? How long was you going before you? Um, like, how long were you leaving for a husband? Um, since I was a teenager. Since you was a teenager, right? Now, at how old were you when you got married? Thirty, 30 years old. Evidently, you did something to catch him, right? I'm sure you prayed. I'm sure you glamorized yourself, you know, whatever you did. Because <laughs> you're made online, right? But a lot of people are online, but they didn't get him. And when he came before you, and they didn't get him, that's what you did, right? So let's just say, I'm not trying to put you in a spot, but let's just say somebody was single and they were around her age and they wanted to get married. Let's say a woman. What you would do is you would go to somebody like her and say, what did you do, girl? Because you got the manifestation. I don't. Am I right? What did you do, Thais? You got the manifestation. I don't. And go on and on. What did you do, Makita? What did you do in that? What did you do, Pastor Fabian? You got the manifestation and I don't. And vice versa, if you're a male. What did you do to get her? You're a divorcee. Some people look at you like, ah, you ain't getting that. You ain't getting no, 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 no chick who has never been married before. You ain't worthy. With no kids, you got a kid and you're divorcee? Nah, son. But you was like, no, I'm worthy. <laughs> of even a woman who has never been married and no kids. And you received. Somebody should go to you and say, well, man, how, how'd you receive? And then you can begin to give them your story. Sometimes we're not winning because we're not going to others who've already won. I'm done. Number three, last thing. Present yourself to the world. The life kept showing up, presenting himself to the Moses, I ain't going too deep into that. Aaron showed up. But here's the greatest one. Your savior showed up and presented himself to the world. You ready for the scripture? Acts 1 to 3. This is Luke. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandment to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also, what? Presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during what? 40 days. <laughs> we started with Goliath presenting himself for 40 days and 40 nights. We're ending with Jesus presenting himself for what? 40 days. And speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. We have a champion of the Philistines and we have our champion of the kingdom of God. And they both did the same thing. They presented themselves for 40 days. That's not in there by happen chance. Will you present yourself to this world in 2024? Will you say, world, look at me. Will you go to the world with your gifts and your talents and help hurting humanity? and bless someone, and lift someone else up, and have an impact on your family, your community, your generation. Will you do that? Or will 2024 be another year of making it through? 
The choice is yours. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for this dynamic message on leadership of presenting ourselves to you, to ourselves, and to the world. We are excited about this year. We're expecting you to move by your spirit in our lives like never before. And we will not be ashamed of our gifts. We will not be ashamed of the anointing in our lives. We will not shrink back. We will not be afraid. We will not be lazy. We will not go back. But we will move forward and do what Jesus told Peter to do. We're going to launch out into the deep. And we're going to be everything you've called us to be and do everything you've called us to do this year. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.